Kia ora katoa. Thank you, Rob. Um, Sir Mark, uh, who's joined us this morning, Roger, and uh, lots of other extraordinary uh, people who are going to be part of what will be a very, very interesting day. It's great to be here. Uh, I wish I was able to remain for the entire session, but uh, looking at that can of uh, Shorter Rise Cathedral reminds me that at 9.30 I have a council earthquake forum in which there is going to be a large debate around what's going to happen to the cathedral. And as I came into the building this morning, standing at the front door, a couple of lovely people from WeCan who gave me some pieces of paper and reminded me, as I'm sure they reminded many of you, that what we're actually dealing with here isn't just about business and buildings and futures for many people. It's still about how does this affect me today? And how can the problems that I have on my plate be resolved? And that's a very, very real issue for thousands of people in our city. I was looking at that beautiful video, and it really is gorgeous. And uh, it reminds me of my Uncle Peter, who lives down in Barrington Street still, is in his 90s. And in his garage, he has this most wonderful model railway set up. I think he's collected every piece of Hornby train set since he was a boy. And it's an amazing collection. And I remember as a kid, I loved going into Uncle Pete's garage because I could look at this beautiful little model of little trains and little people and little buildings, and it was a kind of perfection. And I think looking at that video, it sort of takes me back. We look at a world that was, but it's reduced in a sense to a kind of perfect model, a kind of pleasant place where nothing much was really going wrong. And we had power in our lives. We could actually feel that we had a sense of daily determination. Things weren't too bad. And then on the 4th of September, as we all vividly know, everything began to change. And we've ended up in a place where many of us feel powerless, both in the face of what's happened with Mother Nature and the earthquakes. We've been reminded that we are just a, a sense, a, a piece of cosmic dust in, in one way, that the planet can heave and move and shift, and we're not actually that powerful. And so the position that we find ourselves in today, in a sense, is as human beings trying to reassert that control and that normality and that shape that gave us so much comfort before. But it can never come back the way it was. We all know that. But what's interesting is what is it that we all want out of the future, out of these years of hardship, out of the loss and out of the pain that this community has endured? What do we want? And what is it that we are actually going to get? It can be really tempting just to look, depending on where you're standing, at the issues that are in front of you. They might be dealing with EQC and insurance companies, and it's great to see that we've got the Insurance Council coming down here today to talk about some of those issues. And there'll be a number of perspectives that are going to be discussed uh, throughout that. It's also great to see that uh, we've got um, our wonderful folks from uh, the uh, scientific world to talk to us about the nature of the events that we've found ourselves in. And I imagine there'll be some discussion about what are the potentials in the future, what is going to happen, and what do we take out of this. What we do know is that our community told us really clearly through that brilliant process called Share an Idea about the kind of future that they really wanted. They wanted something that would be sustainable, something that would be really, really safe, something that would reflect the values that they believe are at the heart of this city. And again, if you actually go back in history, it's really interesting that from the European perspective, and I would imagine from the uh, Maori perspective, people really came to this place looking for something better, something new, something that would give them uh, a quality of life that would improve on what they had before they made the decision to come to this place. It was reformers from Christchurch College in Oxford who said, as a response to the Industrial Revolution, we want to go somewhere and create a city where there is a balance between people, between business, between the environment, where we have a world that's not just in their terms and perhaps our terms high tech, but also high touch, to draw upon the cliched book title of a decade or two back. So what kind of city are we going to leave 
What will our legacy be? And we are actually inhabiting an extraordinary moment in history. This never happens, right? This always happens to somebody else, except this time it happened to us. And the responsibility falls to us as well. What is the shape of this city going to be for the generations in the future? And if we take into account what's happening in the world, and I know I, I tend to say this over and over again, but we, we can't lose sight of the fact that we're not just rebuilding our city. We're actually laying a foundation for some sort of sustainable future for our values, for our people, and especially for our children. We know that half the people in the world today have moved into cities. New Zealand's actually ahead of that trend. And they're not going to move ultimately to Christchurch or maybe even to Auckland. Ultimately, it's going to be the megacities on the planet that will be attracting the young people. And so we're heading towards a deficit of young people in our city. Now, that's not sustainable. So how do we ensure that the decisions that we make today will leave a legacy that people will want to inhabit in the future? And I would say that the answers are actually in share an idea. The answers that our community gave us is one of the greatest gifts that's been delivered to a community through any democratic process. That is a basket of knowledge that's available to anybody. And that is what our people said to us they would like us to give them, and it's perfect. If you have studied urban design, if you have looked at the nature of societies moving forward and the challenges that we face, the people of the city were not ill-informed. The people of the city laid down a wonderful blueprint for our future, and we, I would suggest, ignore that at our peril. Not just because people won't be happy if they don't see the sort of city emerging that they want, but because people un intuitively understand what the future is about. We're a well-educated, well-informed country. So the challenge that we all face is how do we solve the short-term problems that are on our plates? Why is it that my 80-year-old parents are still battling with EQC and their insurers more than two years after the first event in a house which is well below code? They shouldn't be living in there. We can't get them out. It's not going to be warm in the winter. And this is a problem that's faced by thousands of people in our city. We have to resolve those problems, and I think there is a need for us to find ways as much as we can to speed those processes up. But we can also see the signs of incredible opportunity emerging here in Christchurch. I'm sure that uh, Peter Townsend will talk about some of the great strengths of business in Christchurch. The fact that after the earthquakes, more than 90% of the businesses in this town were still functioning. We changed the rules. We allowed people to operate out of their houses. But our GDP over the last 12 months is something like 7.5%, set to go much, much higher. It's going to drive the GDP of New Zealand. That the city has not been abandoned by its people, as many of the commentators would ask me repeatedly in the first weeks after both the September, but especially after the February earthquakes. Are people going to stay here? Does the city actually have a future? Our population today is bigger than it was on the day before the earthquakes. So there are many positive, strong signs. There is no doubt we have a great future. There is no doubt we can rebuild again. All of those things will happen. But the question still remains, what are we going to rebuild? What will, in the city that we rebuild, ensure that the legacy that we leave from this moment in history is fit not just for those who have come before us by way of remembering what they achieved, but also fit for purpose, will deliver us a city that will have a real future, that will be a sustainable place, that will change the demographic imbalance and ensure that our young people and the generations that follow won't only feel that they have a place in Christchurch, but they have a real future in Christchurch. So I look forward I wish I could look forward to listening to all the discussions today, Rob, but I will be departing almost immediately for the chamber for some intriguing debates. I wish I could stay here because the discussions that you have and the ideas that will be shared are absolutely priceless. The disagreements you have are the disagreements that we need to resolve. So 
I hope that you don't just disagree, but you have solutions as well. And I hope that you will continue to work with all of us together because that's what we actually need to do. We actually have to work together. We have to get over the differences. We have to reconcile the things that we can't have and focus on the things that not only we can have, but the things that we should have and the things that we will need to give this beautiful place the kind of future it deserves. So I wish you well this morning, uh, Rob, and uh, thank you for allowing me to say a few words at the start of this. Thank you. Thank you.